What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in. Today we are working on a 2009 Subaru Outback and we are replacing a power steering rack. Rack and pinion, however you want to call it. Uh, there's a link in the description below for a new one of these off of eBay. Um, better than your local parts store's price probably. But this power steering rack in the car is currently leaking, making all kinds of noises, running out of fluid, and just no longer working. So we're going to slap this new one in. Let's check out the tools you'll need for this job. One thing that's really important, have a good flashlight. Lights are very helpful, obviously. And then you need a 14, 17, a 12. Get yourself a couple of wrenches. You need a 17, a 19, a 14, and a, yes, a 13. Most likely, I think these are for the tie rods, if I remember correctly. Um, we got some genuine Subaru automatic transmission fluid, and this is what you use for your power steering pump if you have a Subaru. So just go ahead and get yourself some of that. And there's a link in the description down below for this stuff as well. Really cheap, straight from eBay. And of course, we have our new tie rod ends here. So I uh, always recommend replacing the tie rods with the power steering rack. Just helpful when you're already there doing it. I'm going to use the impacts for this job uh, just because it's a little bit quicker for me and take you guys on this journey. So let's get this power steering rack thrown in there. I already have it lifted up on jack stands. If you guys are looking for some really good jack stands, these are only like 50 bucks on Amazon and they have a locking pin. These go almost twice as high as the little Harbor Freight ones. Muy bueno. All right, to remove these cotter pins back here, I like to obviously flatten the side of it and get it ready. And I'll grab it with a pair of clippers like this, and I'll just pull it out. Uh, drop your favorite method to remove these in the comments below if you do it differently. You might have to go rent a tool, get a little front end service kit. So it's likely if your tie rods are stuck, you can go rent this from your local auto parts store, anything like that. It's just a little tie rod remover. All right, so these things, they just slide on the bottom. That little top part goes on the bolt like so. And they pop out like that. So that's why I prefer the tool. It's a lot quicker than sitting there banging on the thing over and over again. Just get the job done right. And you can get these for like 20 bucks for a rental and they give you your money back. Pop that in there, and it's just as easy as that. Ping. Easy piece. Yo, I'll put a link in the description for this exact one right here, and I'll put one for a cheaper one. But these are really important to have and uh, super, super helpful. As you can see, just saved me a lot of time and headache right there. So check out the description for links for all the tools and parts. Anytime you guys click on those links, I make a small commission, and uh, it helps me out a lot. So thank you guys. All right, now we're into the car here. Next, you're going to want to remove this little bracket. There's a 414 to hold it on. And then you can come over here, remove these 14s and that 12 holding it on. And over here, those 14s and 12 right there. Undo all those brackets. And then we have this bracket right here holding it in. Those are two 14s. And underneath this one, can't quite see it, but there's another bracket back here holding it in, but... You'll uh, need the 14 millimeter wrench here too, because these have a little nut on top I forgot about. And now we're on this bracket. You just leave that in there until you take it out. It's easier to get to. All right, next we just have the uh, input shaft bolt here. And you want to do this after it's all loosened up. That way you can drop this down a little bit. We just have this bolt and the lines left. And once we disconnect the lines and this bolt, the whole thing is coming out. So you can use a wrench here. I'm using a socket on a flex head gear wrench. And we're just going to break that free. All right, sometimes to get this thing off, you got to stick like a little screwdriver or a pry bar up under there. And then that'll just pop right off. Now we're going to give us a little pull. All 
All right, so now you have the input shaft disconnected. You can give it a little tug and you'll get a little bit more room here. As you can see, it hits the sway bar when it comes down and the sway bar hits the exhaust. You can remove this exhaust. We're gonna try to get around that and we're gonna try to slide it down this way first and then see if we can get that tie rod out of the way. But we gotta disconnect these lines. So see, it has a bunch of slack like that now. So now we're gonna go try to pull out the rack and see if we can get access to that from the from the bottom there. All right, we're gonna wiggle this around and see if we can get a little bit more room to access those lines. So my thought with it was to slide it down this way. And slide it down this way. I don't think it's gonna let me get it out like that. All right, so I just disconnected that half of the sway bar. Now I'm gonna move the tie rod up and over a little bit. Remember those lines are still connected, so we're not yanking it down yet. All right, so I have the power steering rack down on the bucket. Again, you can just remove your, whole, your exhaust manifold and drop it if you don't wanna mess around with all this. But by sagging this down just a little bit, it gives us room to those lines right there. Um, I just cracked that one free off camera, so that's why it looks like it's leaking. Show you what it looks like from the top real quick. So here's the lines from the top. Nothing's too stressed, nothing has a lot of pressure on it. Everything's still loose. That bucket's holding it and the frame's still holding it up. So we're gonna break these free and you'll need a bucket close by so you can catch all the fluid that comes out. So what I'll do is I'll reach through this little tight spot in the back. I'll take my stubby little 17. And we're just gonna crack that free. And this is why a crow's foot, I'll put a link in the bio for a crow's foot if you guys haven't seen that before. Uh, I should get some myself really, cause man. This isn't the math. It's got so much like crap on it that it's pretty much a size bigger than what it is. Cause I gotta like wrench, see that shit? Or see that? I gotta like wrench this thing on there. So once you have it there, you should be able to just take this off finger tight and you can push up on it just a little bit to relieve the pressure. All right, so the same thing here. You're gonna take your 14 millimeter, get it on the bottom. Guys, remember the top of these don't spin if you're not familiar with these. So it's just used to hold it when you're tightening it. So don't try to spin the top, just spin the bottom. And if it feels like it's tight, relieve some of the tension off of it if you're doing it this way. You don't want to pull these lines hard. Um, again, there's a better or proper way to do it. I don't know if you call it better, but um, they're, they're, they make line wrenches and all kinds of stuff like that for this. Ooh, there she goes. Pour it all over my phone. Getting lovely. Right on my shit. All right, so it's really hard to film there while it's leaking, but remove that 14 millimeter all the way. All right, sorry about that. I was getting the fluid all over my phone and it was hard to film, but yeah, just unscrew this. And, and maybe this shortcut isn't much of a shortcut because it's kind of a hassle to do this. And also putting the pump back in, it might be best just to take off the exhaust manifold. So we might end up doing that, but I'm gonna get this pulled out and removed from the car real quick. Sorry if I missed recording that. Sometimes I forget to push a button, but all right, power steering rack is out. Very easy to slide it, pull it forward. So remember when you take these off, you will have to switch these two lines. These little plastic things right here, uh, the little stoppers when you take when you take these lines out replace those lines with the little stoppers and that'll prevent this from leaking fluid if you got to take it in your car or take it anywhere but that's what we're gonna do next is we're just gonna switch over the brace and all the stuff over onto that power steering pump right there check out the mechanic footwear you guys like that thank you thank you and also this is just preference but I'm actually gonna cut these one-time use clips off and I'm gonna take these clips off right here because I wanna put these on um, here because they will just be a lot easier to adjust. These are a pain in the ass to adjust. You gotta cut them and just redo them every time you do an adjustment and it's gonna need that when I put it on the car. So I'm gonna take these clips. So I order all this meat from ButcherBox, uh, link in the description if you guys wanna check them out. Awesome meat products, but 
they send us as insulation and I keep it in the shop for stuff to absorb oils and stuff like that. It's actually perfectly shaped for the power steering rack. So shout out to ButcherBox for the extra insulation. All right, so we got the steering rack laid out. We're just gonna remove those two lines. Fluid's gonna come out, all that good stuff. I'll put this in just so it doesn't leak all over the other nut while I'm trying to get to it because it's not helping it and it's uh, already wanting to strip here. So this one was actually seized on really good and it was starting to strip. So I actually grabbed this with vice grips extremely tight and was able to break it free. Could run into that. These are soft so it's really easy to scar them up. All right, guys, so everybody has their own way. Um, I forgot about this nut right here, but this is just personally what I do. Just to get it as close as possible to what the other rack was at, I actually check from the bottom of the nut to the tip of the shaft, just like your mom does. And this is about 23 millimeters, 22.9. So I'll, I'll call it 23. And uh, I'll write that down. Of course, it's upside down in the video, but I'll write this down and then I'll make the passenger side 23 millimeters just to get a good starting point. So this is oddly a 13 millimeter. This is a 19 millimeter So on to the driver's side now same thing I'll come back over measure this guy up Just a little 22 So I'll write that down and then I'll uh Put it, like I said, on the same on the other side. All right, guys, and that is it for this power steering rack. We have the line off that we need. We have the mount off we need. We have everything we need. We have the little clips off. Oh, I forgot this little clip. I'll take this off in a second, but that's everything we need. So we're going to switch everything on to the new power steering rack right back here. Uh, another tip, store it in a plastic bag that the other one came in if it did. Throw it in the old box. If you return it for your core charge, then it won't leak all over your car or wherever you take it. So, All right, I'm a clean freak, so I love this. But look how good it, it just catches everything so it doesn't get on my workbench at all. And I'm going to put the clean one on here that's not really leaking any fluid. I'm just going to flip this guy over. All right, so I put these clamps back on again. That way we can slide them back off when we need to adjust the alignment. So a lot easier than those one-time use clamps. Also, I imagine from the marks here in shipping, uh, these pipes got bent down, so this bracket actually wouldn't fit. So this is a good thing to try to fit outside the car as well. Uh, ours was pushed up against it, so we just warmed these up and moved them very gently to make sure that they were not in the way anymore. And now this bracket fits, so do that right before you install it. Make sure you don't lose that little rubber gasket on there. You can replace them too if you want to. Gotta be careful with these two because they're easy to cross thread, so. Tighten these up, that's boring. Next. All right, so that's how the pipes look. Attached with the bracket on, everything up on there. I'm gonna leave all the mounting brackets off just for a little bit. Um, just so I can move these around a little bit more freely while I attach these up because remember only the bottoms of these spin the tops do not spin And make sure you have any debris cleaned out from this area, too All right, so I'll just have the steering rack kind of hanging in Held up a little bit and then this this gives me access to the top right here so I can actually move the nuts and bolts around and and hook that up so I'll move this line 
plug it right on top and uh, screw those in. Right, so those lines are hooked up. You can kind of get the reach around from the top right there. Um, just finger them. Anyways, you'll figure out your uh, technique on how to get those in. Uh, I just got my arms in there and spun the bottoms of them. And then we got the bracket just barely in. Those are finger tight. And then we have this side just hanging because now we got to put the input shaft on. All right, now we got the input shaft all the way in. You want to come back through with the bolt and push up on this and make sure that it's lined up and sink the bolt in there. I need both my hands and I don't have a tripod that can fit in there. So that's why I'm cutting different scenes. See if I can get it with my knee. No, I can't get it with my knee. I'm not flexible. All right, pause. Input shaft is fully installed now. If you're having trouble with it, make sure that it lines up with the grooves on the inside right there. So otherwise you can cross with that bolt pretty easily. Next, I just have this one bolt in holding it up, but we're going to put the rest of these bolts in and we're going to reconnect the sway bar, put on this bracket, and we're going to get the tie rods put on here. So once we get those tie rods on there, then we'll be, we'll be grooving. All right, now I have everything hooked up except for the tie rods. I'll hook up the tie rods, get the wheels on there, and then we'll start pumping fluid through here and flushing the system before it goes off for an alignment. All right, so now moving over to the tie rods. On the uh, driver's side, I had about 23 millimeters. 22 millimeters, if I remember correctly. So we'll go in and take uh, 22 millimeters here. So I need to go a little bit further up. And this isn't going to be exact. It's just going to give you a good starting point. So you don't got to go crazy on your adjustments here. Yeah, we'll call that about uh, we'll call that about 22 millimeters. It's a good start. So then this part's pretty simple. Before we get into the alignment part of it and all that good stuff, just gonna screw on your tie rod. Here you can kind of just turn that out towards you right there. And I'll leave this loose until I get the alignment set up. So we're just gonna finagle these on and put them through the hole. Get our cotter pins set. And then we're going to do a ghetto alignment, a poor man's alignment as they call it. So then you just turn this wheel in, obviously, and uh, slide the tie rod in. All right, so we got everything hooked up. Now we just want to throw in some of that good old trans fluid. I'm going to let this sit overnight before I start it because I'm going to go eat dinner and such. So we're going to see if this thing leaks. All right, so I slapped these wheels on here. And now we're going to lower it off the jack stands onto the ramps because we're going to do a poor man's alignment. Just to get the wheels straight enough to get it to the alignment shop, we don't want to chew these tires up. So I'll show you how I get the wheels kind of close. Don't worry about this. It's sketchy, but uh, it'll be all right. Anyways, grab plastic and a piece of cardboard or something. This makes it so the wheel can spin really easily on this. And that way when you're on it, you can, you know, 
get it going like that. So we got that set up on both sides. So I'm just gonna lower the car onto the ramps really quick and then we're gonna start doing that alignment. All right, so now we got the car on the ramps and then come to the tie rod right here. Remember, these are still loose, but they're just close. So then you're gonna grab a 13 millimeter bolt and you'll be able to twist this until you see the tire line up. And that is also why I switched those clips out because these are gonna be a lot easier to pull off to do the alignment. And then you'll want to just kind of stick your head out right here. You can kind of see like the wheels, the wheel in the car is straight, but the tire here is crooked a little bit. You're kind of just going to hit that tie rod and take an eye out back here and keep going back and forth until you get this straightened up on both sides. All right, so we're just going to back the nut off a little bit. All right, so I've taken that clamp off now so that the tie rod can move freely. So now I'll just grab the 13 and we want the wheel to go out just a little bit that way. All right, so really this wheel looks like as straight as I can get it. Um, this is going to an alignment shop afterwards. I just wanted to ride nice till I get there. So I think we're gonna call it there. There's a spot for a 21 millimeter down there on a tie rod. And then of course you have your 19 millimeter bolt here. So you're gonna to wanna to be able to push pressure. We got the fluid level settled here now, right at the proper levels. Next you're gonna to wanna to jack the car up off the ground. And you're gonna to wanna to go right to left, or left to right, doesn't matter which way. But just slowly, all the way to lock position. It was already turned, so it stopped right there. Back over. And do that about five times with the car off and the wheels in the air before you start it. This will kind of help get the air out of the system. All right, so the fluid was put in last night, nothing's leaked. Right now we're actually gonna fire it up and check for leaks before we go on to the alignment. <laughs> As of now, the power steering pump sounds terrible. This might have to be replaced if this went bad or if it got dry, because that was leaking a lot of fluid. So this could have gone dry. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it off, let the fluid settle, and then we're gonna re retry that again. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. 